Hey, Chris, how are you? Doing good this morning. Bart, how are we doing? I'm good. We have a really deep program coming up today. You want to tell them a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, today we are doing a webinar on swarm drones specifically for entertainment, i.e. light shows, and for first responders, i.e. search and rescue. So we've got UGCS, a company out of Latvia that we've got that they'll be coming on to discuss some of the features of their software, the hardware that you need to make it work, and a few other questions that uh, to, to be able to do swarm drone flights here in the U.S. Yeah, they're, they're a really neat group. We had an opportunity to uh, speak with them at AUVSI last year, and the software they've got is pretty incredible. Uh, it also really falls in some of the things that we're doing here at the drone port, Denton and Chris, with uh, Swarm Technology and what Amerisky is doing up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're uh, Amerisky is building Swarm drones for light shows and getting into you know search and rescue. So the UGCS software is a great platform for that uh, to base that off of. Well, uh, without further ado, we'll bring on our our guest from UGCS and we'll jump in on that panel. Hello everyone, my name is Bart Massey. I'm the Executive Director of the USA Drone Port. Uh, we welcome you to our webinar series. We have wonderful guests today uh, with us from uh, Latvia and with UCGS. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves in just a moment. We have uh, Mr. Chris Stiles with Amerisky. Uh, he also works at and with uh, the USA Drone Port. So with that, I think I'd like to start with uh, Eric's. Eric's, would you care to introduce yourself, please? Okay, uh, nice to meet you guys. My name is Eric Pastors. I'm the Drone Show Software Sales Manager. And uh, today I will tell you a few words about the very nice application uh, to show and uh, execute and perform the drone shows. It's nice to have you here. Thank you for taking the time to be with us, uh, Madeira. Yeah, hello everyone. So my name is Madura and uh, I am a colleague of Eric's. Uh, so we both uh, represent company SPH Engineering. Yeah, as Bart introduced uh, us from UGCS. Yes, we are more known as a team of UGCS because of uh, our UGCS product, which has been uh, in the market the longest. So, and today I will just uh, participate in these discussions on our developments in regards to mock drone uh, flights and, and uh, what we have done. It's great to have you here. Chris? Sure. Uh, my name is Chris Stiles. I am, like as Bart mentioned, with Amerisky. We do, uh, we build swarm drones for search and rescue and light shows, uh, small quadcopters. And I'm also the operations director with USA Drone Port. Been, uh, flying drones for 16 years. So lots of experience on the operations side and R&D side. Good to have all of you here. Uh, Chris, would you like to start? Sure. Um, so Madar, this question is for you. Uh, how has UG UGCS embraced swarm technology? Uh, okay, so <clears throat> within my introduction, I already like uh, mentioned SPH Engineering. So that's the company itself and uh, we are actually software uh, integrators and developers in uh, in Unman world, Unman system world. So, uh, and uh, actually, the first product which we put in the market was UGCS, Universal Ground Control Software. Hopefully, everyone who listens to this uh, knows uh, what is UGCS. So, flight planning software for drones and. From the very beginning, it has al always been a software which is capable to plan and uh, execute missions of multiple drones. So, uh, yeah, and uh, that's that that's where where also all the other our uh, products and developments in multi drone systems came out, like from UGCS. That's great, uh, Eric. Did you want to go ahead and? walk us through some of the features of it and what you really need hardware wise and software to make a swarm capability work for both light shows and uh, search and rescue. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about the drone show software. Uh, the first of all, uh, I wish to tell you that uh, drone shows uh, are, with the drone show software are uh, 
pre-created animations uh, performing the drone shows uh, uh, sometimes later on, on the field. And the drone show uh, itself uh, has a, a very uh, few very uh, few very uh, important steps uh, to be performed. First of all, it's uh, you should uh, create the animation or choreography of your drone show, uh, and then you will export it to the drone show software, and the drone show software sends these uh, animations to the drones and they are performing these, uh, uh, these uh, shows for your, your customers. Uh, the, from the technology point of view, uh, here is the few very important uh, parts which uh, should be uh, implemented during the shows. And these are the drones itself, which are not usual. Uh, ordinary drones uh, from local shop, they have, should have the TK GPS, uh, LED payload, uh, Wi-Fi models on, on them. Uh, and of course, the first and secondary communication channels to upload the missions and uh, perform the shows. Uh, and uh, therefore, we have just uh, three suppliers around the world who are uh, created and who supplying the, these drones uh, for you to perform the shows. Uh, the, as I told, uh, the software is installed on the two separate uh, laptops, which are uh, the Win Microsoft Windows based. Uh, on one, you will use the software itself. On second is a backup uh, laptop uh, and uh, some other applications which uh, you are using on them, like uh, emergency. In emergencies case, you will use the red button application and a TK client, uh, which should be on them. And of course, the Wi-Fi, uh, five gigahertz Wi-Fi should be set up just for show only and the TK GPS base station. Uh, should be presented uh, on, on the shows. Uh, how you can start your, your shows? The first of all, of course, it's uh, your bright idea and your nice uh, view on, on the entertainment world or event world. And therefore, you should have the team uh, on, on board and the team uh, should have at least three guys uh, or ladies uh, uh, on board. Uh, the first is the engineer with uh, like knowledge of the information technologies and networking. Uh, another guy should uh, have the drone pilot license and of course uh, some uh, creative mind uh, specialist who can create nice animations. Uh, then you uh, acquire the drone show so license uh, with the uh, training uh, from us or from our partners. Uh, you will uh, complete the training and the training is uh, possible on site or uh, online, depends on your location and uh, worldwide situation like COVID today. And then you should acquire the fleet of the drones, at least 20 drones or more. Uh, and uh, then you pr will practice uh, many times, at least five, six times to, 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 to get uh, in a row with the drone shows. And then you are ready to do and perform your first customer uh, commercial paid uh, show. It's uh, just in, in a few words about the drone show software and drone show itself. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Chris, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Amerisky and uh, what made you and your team decide to build uh, drones for Swarm applications? Uh, yeah, so a little bit on Amerisky. Uh, it's a small company. Uh, it's, it's a group of guys that have been doing DIY builds with drones, uh, doing R&D with them. We've, we've worked on big projects on government, government things for doing rapid prototyping or building systems, uh, hybrid type systems. And so we work a lot with the USA drone port, obviously. And we had a client here in the US that was preferring an American made platform. And uh, right now that's kind of limited for the US market, you know, US hardware, US based, pretty much everything, 
primarily most everything comes from China. So we started our company to kind of help foster that here in the US for American entities that wanted to use US made platforms with UGCS software uh, as the backbone for it and like a Pixhawk autopilot system. And that's an open source platform that enables this. So we got into that. Uh, we've got a couple clients that we've, we've worked with and uh, you know, it's, it's a great growing field. And then of course we also you know, envision the future uses with search and rescue applications with first responders. So that's also very important for us and our core values to support that. Uh, Bart, uh, why is the USA drone port a logical location for testing, research, and development of these technologies such as swarm drones? Well, the beautiful thing about the USA drone port, we have 50 acres located in the middle of tens of thousands of acres that has no population, but we're actually only eight miles out of uh, town, which has hospitals, restaurants, hotels, and all that. So the intellectual property of our customers can be protected. Uh, but on top of that, we also have uh, runways for fixed wing aircraft. Uh, we have uh, build and manufacture buildings, so you can do formation, welding, whatever you need to do for any type of aircraft that you're, try that you're working on and developing. And we're in the process right now of spending one and a half million dollars on an indoor flight facility and an indoor weather facility where you can take drones and put them in wind, uh, rain and different types of environmental conditions to do research on those drones that is not able to be done in a research methodology right now in the United States to the average startup or drone builder. We're a nonprofit, um, so we're here to support our customers uh, in their efforts with what they do. So for instance, with the Swarm Show, um, we have the ability for them to fly uh, and really nobody will be able to see the practice, the missions, they won't be interrupted. Uh, we have locations to store the drones. So if they come in and do testing one week and have to come back in a month rather than have to ship the drones back and forth, they can do use storage there. Um, and so it's a really good uh, location uh, for for all of that and hopefully down the road, you know, as uh, things progress and drone shows uh, are done indoors more often, um, this can be tested inside our indoor flight facility. It'll start off at 10,000 square feet and we hope to expand that uh, really soon. But uh, stay tuned, there's lots going on with USA Drone Port and our partners. We're really excited about uh, UGCS and Ameri uh, Amerisky with all the work that you've been doing up there, Chris, I mean, you all built several drones and done quite a bit of operations there. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Chris, what do you see with the challenges of unmanned aircraft uh, as we uh, move forward with the uh, swarm technology? Uh, well, there's several challenges, obviously. Um, Regulation is the big upfront thing in America and around the world in a lot of places. You know, flying one drone, one pilot is kind of the established standard right now for, for most use cases. And so that's how most of the regulations allow that to that, that type of operation to occur uh, with swarm. And this technically isn't swarming as in you send a command and the drones figure out how to conduct that command or that mission and they work amongst themselves. This setup is more one-on-one, -on -one. everything is pre-programmed per drone, per flight plan on each and they go and they fly a coordinated choreographed uh, you know, mission. So there is a little misnomer on, on the swarm definition. You know, military swarming would be somebody launches 20 drones at one target and they just figure out how to engage and take out that target you know, all on their own and they're communicating with each other. This setup, they're not communicating with each other. It's you know, everything down to a ground station. So you have a lot of communication uh, challenges to be able to get range and communicate with you know, if, you, if you're operating 20 drones, it's a little easier than when you're trying to operate 500 drones in a light show. You know, your, your challenges, you know, are exponential with getting the, all that RF energy and signal not stepping on each other. Uh, it's Wi-Fi based, so obviously you're limited with that as well. Regulatory is, go back to that, you know, that's the big thing too, with getting approvals to fly more than one drone per pilot. So that, that's a process to get a waiver. You know, normally you'd be operating these under part 107, and also another thing is 
usually for the light shows, you're going to be flying them at night, obviously. So you need a waiver to be able to fly at night, uh, typically for most aviation authorities and uh, flying multiple drones. So you, you have to come up with your safety measures, put in that application, and then gives you approval. Rather, you're going to get approved to fly 20 drones, 50 drones, or 500 drones. Um, so obviously, if you're flying that many drones, you're going to need more crew to support that, more visual observers, and the hardware side. Um, and then, of course, logistics of transporting room is a challenge as well. But it's the technology is advancing. You know, it started in the military, and the military has been using it for a little bit. Other militaries around the world are experimenting with the concept, how they can use it. Obviously, it's dual use capability, you know, so it's got the military side and it's got good commercial, you know, civilian uses for search and rescue. Obviously, you know, a benefit there is if, you know, somebody's lost out in the wilderness or a field, you know, you can take a search and rescue group can go out and set up 10 drones and say, hey, we need to search this huge area of several hundred, you know, acres. And then those drones can break it up or you can break it up with those drones to scan certain sectors and you can do that much quicker than you could do it with just one drone you know so there's there's definitely you know really good you know uses for this for society as well a lot of challenges but a lot of possibilities yes yeah. as with any new technology all right so eric's what type of drones and autopilot systems are compatible with the ugcs software uh, to work with swarm flights yeah, of course, as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, uh, these are not uh, like usual drones, which you can uh, just uh, go outside and uh, buy it in the local uh, electronic shop. Uh, we are supported on a Pixhawk based uh, autopilot it, drones. Uh, and, sorry, uh, if, if I can interrupt, like there is a difference between like if you talk about UGCS supported drones and uh, yes, autopilot uh, and, yes, uh, you are correct. Uh, we are working and which are supported by drone show software. Therefore, uh, like what Eric now is explaining is like the ones uh, which work specifically for with this drone show software, which we have developed uh, for like putting hundreds of drones into the air and then and, and like uh, uh, running drone shows. So, right. and uh, when it goes to UGCS, like uh, almost uh, like uh, most of DJI drones are supported as well as like uh, modeling compatible and uh, like most of the drones and autopilots which are mainly used by users who uh, fly drones uh, for commercial purposes. So, yeah, but uh, for drone show software, it's specific. Yeah, uh, okay, thank you, Mother, about this, yeah, because I'm a little bit focusing just only on, on particular product uh, with uh, whom you can uh, fly the drone shows, and therefore it's valid only for the drone shows. Another UGCS uh, applications uh, can use uh, many other types of the drones. Okay, if we go back to the drone show, uh, drones, then these are, as I mentioned, are only the Pixhawk based uh, drones, and then they should uh, have on board the Wi Fi models, they should have the, uh, on board the LED payload, and of course, the ATK GPS and uh, Wi Fi and radio communication for the uh, communication models uh, to to communicate with the software and perform the the night nice and synchronized uh, shows. And now uh, we have the at least three suppliers around the world, uh, of course, with the option uh, for the customers to build their own drones uh, using our bill of material. Uh, sorry about that, but there uh, can these. Uh, can these uh, technologies be used indoors now uh, in the configuration uh, the software is in? Like uh, drone show software, yeah, drone show software at this point it works only for outdoor shows. So uh, uh, the answer is no <laughs> at this moment. But of course, we are look, uh, looking and researching the options for for indoor shows as well. Let us see what the future brings. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, we said when Chris was talking, the future's bright. There's a lot of things we're moving into, and uh, it's, it's 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 exciting times. Yeah, from the Marisky side, we get that question uh, 
more often than not, you, you'd be surprised how many people go ask, can we fly these indoors because they want to do it inside of a stadium or an arena or, you know, on stage doing, you know, a little dance, you know, type choreographed thing. So obviously there's hardware things that you have to integrate in to be able to make that work with, because when you're flying inside, you don't have GPS. And that's yes, exactly. a, a big requirement to make all these work and fly safely. You need to have a good GPS position fix for your drones so that they're not hitting each other and or they're not hitting things. So that's a challenge that obviously, like we said earlier, you know, as technology is advancing, that's just one thing that, you know, you guys, will, it's, it's coming down the line. Like we are seeing <laughs> such inquiries a lot as well, like, and uh, actually all what our company does comes from end user input. So and interest in, in specific technology or configuration. So we are researching that and, and developing if we see it like uh, valuable for other users as well. Yeah. Eric, you wanted to add something. Yeah, because uh, the, 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 the <clears throat> for example, the drone shows uh, can be performed uh, today just uh, outly outside with our application because we very heavily rely to the direct GPS, uh, GPS uh, signal and satellites and uh, the drone should see the satellites directly and therefore uh, the, the sometimes if you wish to do uh, the drone show in Manhattan, for example, it could be quite challenging because uh, these tall buildings will, will do not allow to see these 10, 12 satellites. But if you are going to outside uh, on the field or in the smaller towns, then of course it's, the setup is very, very simple because you just uh, put on, on, on the field uh, just the operator table, just the uh, a TK GPS base station and you pay, place some uh, somewhere the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi uh, network router and that's it. And you can yeah. fly the show after maybe some 30, 45 minutes. Yeah, I could add on uh, part of the challenges you touched on, Eric, is uh, when you try to operate these in an urban environment, it is challenging because you have, like you mentioned, GPS masking with tall buildings. But you also usually in those urban areas, there's a lot of other Wi-Fi activity. So that'll step on your Wi-Fi link ability as well. So that could link either your range that you can fly these things from the base station or how many you can fly. You know, so you, you, you might not be able to fly 500. You might only be able to fly 100 in, in an, a really dense urban environment as opposed to going out and doing it in a rural Obviously, also it's safer. You know, you have less traffic to worry about trying to not fly over top of, not flying over people. You know, so urban use is quite a challenge. But you know, and that's going to take time for the FAA to get familiar with the technology, familiar with the the software, how it really works, and the hardware before they really allow that to be a, a normal thing. Yeah, you know, and you mentioned the FAA, and that's that's an interesting thing too, because the laws of the United States are um, they're, they're coming along, but uh, you have to, you know, you literally have to get these waivers and they're not something that you just sign a piece of paper or get like a driver's license. This is, uh, it's a lot of paperwork. It's very time consuming. There are very few people in the United States that actually have a swarm waiver right now. Uh, we're working with some people who have those that uh, you can uh, work with them and fly under their waiver. Uh, we're also working on a swarm waiver with the USA drone port. I know Ameriska is working on one as well here in the United States. So, um, you know, if there's uh, anybody in particularly in the United States that's interested in swarm technology and being able to fly uh, under these waivers, uh, get a hold of us. We can probably help you out in some regard with that. So, good point you brought up, Chris. Uh, but so can I have a question? Like, uh, do you also uh, provide uh, consultations to those like uh, interested to, for support to get uh, their individual uh, waiver, like those specific for flight drone shows? There's not support for it really. Um, like, mm -hmm. for instance, when uh, when I wrote, I've got a daylight waiver to be able to fly at night. Um, it was tricky even for that. Uh, I had, it took, it was five pages and I had to send it in twice to be able to get it. So um, the important thing about any waiver in the United States, the FAA is based on safety. 
and that's really what all the uh, everything's based around so as you write waivers or as you uh, do anything that deals with the FAA the number one thing is safety uh, risk management uh, mitigating uh, circumstances that could be problematic and I mean, you know every time we write something that needs to be um, that needs to be looked at by them because they, and it's uh, and rightfully so safety is number one you know so but direct, more direct to your, your question uh, yes the, the drone port does help uh, companies and entities that want to get waivers to help them understand the process consult and, and actually have them get a waiver as an end result we've got uh, really good ties with the FA. We talk to them on a weekly basis. We've got uh, somebody that's directly assigned to the drone port and any of our clients that come to us for support, you know, to get waivers or COAs um, that they need to be able to fly for their use, you know, not just warm, but night flight, uh, the multi-drone flying over people, um, be online of sight. You know, those are big things that a lot of companies are trying to get. And your software, even the be online of sight for search and rescue to be able to fly, you know, large areas, you know, is a, is a big thing too. Yeah, actually, uh, this has been like uh, the main struggle from the customers inquiring for drone show software and uh, planning to start the drone show business in the States that, uh, okay, they can uh, get software and drones uh, and uh, uh, do that, but uh, then it's like those waivers, like, and uh, as I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, even each state has some differences in these rules, right? Yes. Yeah, like some states, like North Carolina, for example, you have to have a pilot license in North Carolina to fly a drone commercially there on top of your FAA license. Mm -hmm. And you know, depending on the, the locality, they have certain rules about certain areas you can't take off from, parks. Um, like New York City, technically you're not allowed to fly drones in New York City from anywhere. Um, so it's also getting... Uh, to know what those local laws are, where you plan on flying, what the regulations are. And you're right, you know, a lot of the users come to us and this is, drones are not their background. You know, if they're an entertainment venue, you know, they know setting up laser shows and light shows and cameras and speakers and sound systems. They don't know a whole lot about drones, you know, and they, but they want to get into this space and we can help foster that on both getting them the regulatory stuff that they need taken care of and also the flight training. You know, we've got the Swarm Academy, Academy which John is going to be talking about, but uh, we can mention that a little bit later. So it's, 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 that's our background, it's just the drone side to really mm -hmm. help them get, be successful with what they wanna do. Same thing with the public agencies. You know, they know how to do search and rescue, they know how to look for people, they know all of that stuff. But for a lot of them, the drone thing's really new. You know, so it's getting them set up with their safety programs and the protocols and data retention and all, all of the regulatory compliance things where they do it safely. Uh, and also, I wish to add to from uh, our side, from uh, Drone Show Software side, that <clears throat> we built in into our application a uh, few more things which uh, maybe can help uh, our potential customers or Drone Show providers because uh, in, in our software we uh, put like a uh, few safety features like dual, dual geo fences uh, for the drones who is flying in the in these uh, shows, uh, we have the redundant communication links and these radio channels are encrypted. And of course, we built in into the, our application the pre-flight checks and, and then distance uh, between uh, drones is uh, checking at, at very early stages during the animation. And of course, uh, these, these drones who is flying, the, the time is very, uh, good synchronize and also it's, uh, it's synchronized with maybe possible another uh, parts of the shows like fireworks, like uh, lasers, sound, uh, etc. I think that uh, this, this uh, total bunch of the features also can help uh, the drone show providers uh, to, to get uh, this FAA things uh, more clear or, or may, maybe more arguments uh, to get these uh, waivers quicker. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. That's, uh, and those are really good uh, uh, portions to have. I'm glad you mentioned that too, because, you know, they're really big on the pre-flight checks and 
all the safety features that you all have added in. So thank you for adding that. Okay, uh, Madara, what are the exciting new applications that UGCS offers? Okay, yeah, <laughs> actually UGCS or SPH engineering, we have uh, quite a lot of new developments and uh, new products and uh, but uh, I suppose for uh, uh, for this meeting uh, time won't be enough to talk about all of those <laughs> but uh, if we concentrate more on uh, like uh, drone swarms as you name it but uh, of course, from our uh, perspective and, and uh, from our understanding, like the software, how it works, it's not like uh, it works with each drone individually. It's not like that uh, drones communicate between each other, like uh, right. our software communicates with each drone <laughs> uh, since pre-planned flight or uh, and activities. Uh, so mm, uh, we recently uh, up upgraded and uh, polished our UGCS for command and control center solution. It has been out uh, for uh, more than a year already, but uh, now it's more convenient for the specifically uh, for what we are talking about, uh, search and rescue uh, for within. So basically, uh, Besides flight planning and uh, the inbuilt automatic tools, UGCS features like search and risk for search and rescue, it's the creeping line and it's pending square uh, flight planning tool. Uh, we have added like this uh, video streaming capability, so and uh, possibility from some operations center to coordinate and 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 uh, plan and uh, overview these missions which uh, your search and rescue teams are doing within uh, a specific uh, area of, like of interest and uh, yeah also we are improving our UGCS mapper like the stitcher you can uh, already in the field uh, quickly stitch the um, uh, acquired images and uh, understand the uh, 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 the situation and act accordingly. I saw the video that you all uh, shared with us. I thought it was pretty awesome. Really, you, you were going down a trail and lost. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and your team, they took like, three different types of drones, uh, none of them were alike, and used your software and flew and found the location that you were at. It was a really good example of what your of what your all's product does with multiple drones simultaneously to to work on that i think we will probably share the link as well to your video if you all don't mind on youtube so they can uh, so they can see what your all's product does because it's uh, your visual uh, explains it so well it was it was a really good uh, really good commercial yeah, basically it all allows you like uh, just uh, uh, have temporary uh, operations center so, uh, and then send out your pilots uh, who each does his job, but you from this uh, uh, operations center can overlook it, monitor, coordinate and uh, act uh, more faster and, and, and uh, in many cases save lives actually. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, the video streaming is very big uh, for a lot of public agencies that they, they need that capability and they, they're all of them are asking for it so that, you know, you've got the operators out in the field. And even if the incident commander's there, you know, that's there to be able to coordinate things, rather right? they're doing a fire or search and rescue support. Uh, that's great to have that stream to their command vehicle or even back to a command center so that the command center, they can take that and analyze what assets or, or what uh, resources they need to send out to the field to better support that rescue mission or, or what's going on rather it's a mass flooding of an entire area and they're trying to map out the flooding damage or the extent of where you know roads are flooded over bridges are you know uh, non-passable and that sort of stuff so you know that video stream is very big um, and that'll that'll really help with the future stuff yeah and not only also like uh, uh, specifically for those search and rescue guys like uh, we work together with uh, uh, 
partners who does actually these missions and uh, develop those automatic tools so that like with, with UGCS flight planning, it's like simple steps. You uh, get a pre-planned uh, uh, flight for, for your drone uh, to cover all the area in a shorter time and like, uh, yeah, find, find what you were looking for. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, do you all have any questions uh, for us, uh, Eric's and Madara? Anything that, about the USA Drone Port, Amerisky, uh, anything at all? Yeah, actually, we are working uh, for quite a time already, uh, and 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 uh, very excited uh, on 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 what you are building and uh, and. Uh, uh, support you are planning to provide like to end users and uh, uh, yeah looking forward for to it okay uh, from okay from my side just uh, I also I, I was a uh, very good surprise about the, your experience in, in uh, communication with the HAA and of course uh, uh, I expect that uh, maybe you can uh, deliver your experience and knowledge to, to maybe another drone show providers which are uh, needed this uh, at least to spread your word or, or maybe give some hints because uh, as a mother told previously the, the, the FAA waivers uh, are quite challenging uh, process and of course we expect that uh, uh, we can cooperate together and uh, help our customers to, to do this process more quickly and maybe less painful. Yeah, that's uh, less painful. <laughs> it's it's a long process, but there. Yeah, like like a specific, especially especially that uh, uh, we are like we me and Eriks and uh, SPH engineer QGCS all team is based in Latvia in Europe. So and 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 for work with uh, any country like. Uh, we really appreciate the help and uh, the great job our partners does, do. Uh, so, uh, uh, in regards to drone show software, yeah, like we can provide our techni technical knowledge, software, and, and assistance. But uh, when when it comes to end user, uh, it definitely is uh, much more effective if you work with some local uh, partner who holds a hand <laughs> and helps uh, with the local uh, <laughs> regulation and all the, all that questions. It's good having uh, experts working with the drone port like uh, Mariscal. Chris, he's, he mentioned earlier he'd spent 16 years flying drones. There's not a lot of people that have done that. Uh, he, he flew in the military and has been flying privately for a number of years as well. But in this development process, we're kind of like you all in a lot of ways. This is all so new and it's all exciting. And we're building, we're literally developing what people could see as the future in drones. We know the swarm technology is going to expand and grow uh, throughout. And you all are literally at the tip of the spear with this, with your, uh, with your software that you, you provide and the background research that you all have done. So uh, by having you all uh, paired with people like uh, Chris, who is building uh, some pretty amazing drones of different types, um, I think that, uh, you know, it's really good having, having such great partners, particularly on the same screen, being able to talk about all the things that we're doing here. Um, from the drone port side, uh, I want to thank you all for being here today. Um, I, we've, uh, you all have done a great job explaining about your software and uh, we hope to share your uh, videos so people can learn more, particularly if they don't know a lot about Swarm yet. And we invite everybody that uh, watches this to contact us. And we'll be more than happy to, uh, to reply back and um, as soon as this is uh, over, you'll have an opportunity to uh, to ask questions and find out a little bit more. Chris, uh, do you have anything in uh, closing today? Uh, just that uh, you know, I think you know this is on, this is literally the beginning for Swarm and for UGCS for the integration into this field. You know, the drone field is growing. Every two years, it's almost a completely new industry. You you couldn't tell, you know, if from what it was two years ago. 
So, you know, as long as we keep adapting, we keep moving, keep progressing, uh, UGCS, SPH Engineering, you know, you guys are on the cutting edge and uh, there's very few companies that are providing these type of solutions um, to a broad, more open source DIY uh, community or, or community that's not locked down to, you know, just a, a one OEM type product or solution that's coming from one, you know, say China, for example, you know, so this, this enables other entities to be able to put their own little sensors on something of a drone that they've got and it's running off of your uh, your your software to be able to do search and rescue or you know light shows or what have you. You you guys with the UGCS software and you guys can do lots of other things. You know, we've just today been speaking on Swarm with you know the light shows and search and rescue, but your your software is, it opens up the ability for people to do a lot more with drones than you know if you guys weren't around. And uh, you, you guys are leading that charge. There's a couple platforms, obviously, that are maybe just specifically iOS or Android based. You don't you don't have a Windows PC that can, you know, really process and handle the power of what your your applications do um, to be able to do some of these missions and capabilities. So that's a good thing. And uh, you know, we, we look forward to keep working with you and uh, progressing with the capabilities and technology. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, Eric's, uh, Madera, do you all have any uh, closing remarks today? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the discussion. Actually, got uh, really nice insight on what you are doing and what for support we have uh, there in US. So, and uh, uh, yeah, would be happy to talk about other products as well. <laughs> Everyone welcome to reach out to Bart and John and Chris, uh, Chris uh, uh, in regards to our software or uh, their, develop, uh, their help and their assistance. Uh, so thank you. Well, thank you for being on. Eric, do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah, uh, of course, I wish to thank you to you for the possibility to spread our word uh, about the drone shows uh, to, to states. And uh, I, I, I'm very surprised that we have very nice uh, partner in in, uh, in your company. And uh, of course, I hope that uh, we will rely to your services also later. And of course, if uh, you have some open questions or you have some ideas fresh, uh, just uh, drop some word to us or drop the message. Uh, and of course, we will be uh here to to serve your uh, requests and uh, make your our process successfully well that's wonderful so we, we feel the same way well thank you all very much for your time we'll conclude with that um but uh, if you all need anything from the usa drone port don't hesitate call us at any time thank you all appreciate it Bye. thank you Okay, well, that was a great webinar. Uh, we really appreciate our friends and partners from uh, uh, UGCS uh, out of Latvia spending their afternoon and our morning uh, with us on this topic. Um, I want to invite anybody that has any questions, whether it be about um, waivers or research development, testing, education, and drones, uh, to contact the USA Drone Port. Uh, Chris is a great uh, example of this. He helps us at the drone port, but his company also uh, does their research development testing, et cetera, there. So, Chris, maybe you can attest to this to some extent. Absolutely. Uh, the drone port's been a great location for us, both for flying, using it as a spot to do flight testing, but also the facilities there uh, to do rapid prototyping, uh, R&D work, and modifying the, our drones while we're out in the field doing our flight testing uh, to get our drones in their final state for our end customers. Oh, thanks, Chris. I'd also, uh, from the drone port side, like to uh, invite everybody to watch this video. After this recording's over, you'll be able to watch it. We're going to have a live Q&A session right now. And in the future, our, our video is going to be up on our YouTube channel. So please go watch our other webinar videos on our YouTube channel. And of course, like, like and subscribe over there as well. To stay yeah, and even to follow up on what Chris said, this webinar series will continue. Uh, every other week. So if you go to the usadroneport.com website, uh, you'll be able to register for upcoming events. 
Um, we'd also like to hear what you'd like to see. So uh, send us an email uh, or text. Let us know what you'd like to hear about. And you can also go on there very soon and see uh, the multiple uh, events coming up in the series as we progress forward. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, thank you.